on in our health journey, I kept hearing all the benefits to eating nose to tail or eating the whole animal, all the health benefits, the traditional you know, ways that people have always eaten, and I wanted to do it too. But I didn't grow up that way, and I had no idea how to incorporate some of these more you know, organ meats and obscure cuts of meats um, into my diet. So today I'm gonna to show you how we incorporate the whole animal nose to tail into our regular cooking. to give you a little kind of funny picture of what this kind of looks like in our world. So a couple years ago, I was chatting with a farmer friend at a local farmer's market where they sell meat. Um, and a customer walked up, so I quickly, you know, scooted aside and got out of the way. And she said, hey, do you have any oxtails or beef shanks or something like that? And I was like, perked right up because I was so excited because I was not used to seeing people order that um, at farmer's market and so I was like I love those cuts of beef and the big dork in me just opened her mouth and said that the lady turned looked at me completely disgusted and was like that is for my dog and I was just like oh, okay sorry <laughs> um, but I think in a lot of ways it just made me laugh like I think in a lot of ways that's how some of these more obscure pieces cuts of beef are viewed like that's dog food, that's not acceptable kind of food to have as over the last you know 50 to 70 years our culture has shifted from eating the whole animal and eating you know all the organ meats and um, even viewing those as prized cuts of meat that they eat first to viewing those as dog food not fit for humans and only eating you know the muscle meats and your steaks and your ground beefs and maybe some roasts and things like that. And it, it just kind of makes me, it makes me sad, but it's an eye-opening experience to have. And I think that the interesting thing about it is that we are so quick to grab, you know, the collagen powder or the pre-made bone broth without asking any questions about what was put into that, where it came from, what part of the animal, any of those things. We just grab it and say, great, this is good for me, let's eat it. But it, we're totally disconnected from the animal, the food, the whole experience of kind of this nose to tail eating. And so we get pretty passionate about using all of the animal in our cooking. And specifically, when we started um, kind of eating this way, we were on this health journey, right? We were trying to get pregnant and we had some other health challenges that we were struggling with. Um, and so I was really coming at this from a nutrition and health perspective. That was kind of my entry point was that I wanted to eat the most nutrient dense, food that I could. And so that's when I really started incorporating organ meat into our diet. Um, but over time, as we moved onto our homestead and for the first time started raising our own beef to have, um, to have in our freezer, my perspective has just totally shifted from, yes, there are all of the amazing nutritional benefits, but also just from the, you know, humane raising standpoint, like we respect those animals and we are so, so thankful for those animals that we raise. And I could not imagine not using the entire animal in my cooking and just being so, so thankful for every cut that we have that that, that animal has given us. And so that's my perspective now is just both the, the benefit of just not wanting to be wasteful and wanting to be respectful of the animal and, and all that it has given us and just the amazing health benefits that um, kind of some of those more just not common cuts of meat and cuts of beef contain. So we have a few other videos where I go through kind of specifically how we incorporate organ meats into our regular diet, but just to break it down quickly for you here. So we eat liver all the time. Um, I have it almost every day. And so to make, um, to use liver, we turn it into a pate. So basically I take liver, I saute it, I add some onions, um, some spices, I blend it up in the blender, make it into like a thick puree, um, and then I freeze it in like silicone muffin cups or um, little mini loaf pans and little individual size um, containers and I freeze it and I pull out one of those at a time and then I just incorporate that liver pate into to food that we're already eating. For me, I just throw it in in my morning breakfast with some vegetables um, and some greens and some eggs and things like that. But you could throw it into, you know, ground beef or meatballs or soups or other things where basically you're making this like liver 
nutrient dense superfood concoction, but you don't even taste it. And we do a similar thing for um, incorporating heart. Now heart is a lot more mild than liver is going to be. Um, and so a lot of people love just cooking heart up like a steak and incorporating it that way. Um, but we mix it with our ground beef. So I'll chop the heart into chunks, blend it in a blender with, um, or blend it in a blender to get like a pureed texture. And then I'll add that puree to our ground beef and actually turn it into to burgers is one of our favorite, or you could use that and turn it into meatloaf or really anything that you're using that ground beef for, just add some pureed heart in there. And the heart is so mild that you really don't even taste it. It just adds all of the great nutritional benefits that the heart offers. And if you have um, certain butchers will actually take all of those organ meats and grind them in with your ground beef. Um, and so that's another great way to go. We haven't found a butcher that will do that for us here, but I've heard of a lot of people saying that they go that route, then you don't even have to think about using those organ meats. You're already getting the goodness of the organ meat blended into your ground beef, and I promise you, you don't even taste it. If anything, I think it just tastes a little richer and adds a little more just flavor to your beef. So a couple other more obscure cuts of beef um, that we really love are uh, beef soup bones and oxtails. And so I actually prepare these the exact same way, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But um, beef soup bones is what we're making here today. So I've turned those into this delicious stew. And beef soup bones come from um, the beef, they're also can be called beef shanks, but our butcher always labels them as beef soup bones. And they come from the upper leg of the animal. So as you can imagine, this is a well worked area of the animal. Um, and so that meat is gonna be lean, it's gonna be more tough. Um, but it looks like basically a cylindrical disc of meat that has the bone, uh, marrow bone inside of it. So there's like a circle um, marrow bone and then there's meat surrounding that. And so that is one of our favorite cuts. That's actually what people turn into asobuco if you've heard of it or Vietnamese pho. That's a common cut of beef to use. But what I love to do with our beef soup bones, and this is the same way that I prepare oxtail as well, um, is I take the beef soup bones and I just sear them on a pan um, to just you know seal in the moisture and get that nice flavor. And then I slow cook them. So with these more tough cuts of beef, you definitely, slow cooking is your best friend. That is going to make them melt in your mouth, fall off the bone. That is definitely the way to cook these more tough, often these more obscure cuts of beef. And so um, after searing it on the pan, I put it in either a slow cooker or we do this in our Dutch oven and then cook it in the oven, but it's the same thing as cooking it on low in your slow cooker. Um, and so I put it in our Dutch oven and I cover those beef soup bones um, or oxtail with water, just until it's covered. So for us, it was about six cups of water um, thrown over about two to three pounds worth of beef soup bones. And then I just let those slow cook um, for a good eight hours. I did mine overnight. It was probably 10 hours even. Um, and you're just gonna let all of that connective tissue in those, um, connective tissue that's in that, in that meat, break down and it's gonna give you this really collagen rich, nutrient dense, flavorful broth that is just the best. And I, I found it so interesting, the more that I kind of dive into this um, way of eating and nutrition is actually, I, I crave um, beef marrow um, since being pregnant and breastfeeding for the last several years. Like that is just a food that I often find myself craving, which I thought was interesting, but as I looked more into kind of the nutrition of bone marrow and all of the amazing nutritional benefits that it has, um, besides just the gut healing properties, um, the immune, immune boosting properties, um, the anti-inflammatory properties, and just the fact that it's been one of these kind of tr prized foods for, you know, centuries and centuries and centuries, um, one of the unique things about it is that it has this... Um, compound called, I, I might butcher this, alpha, alpha glycerols, um, don't take my word for that, but I believe it's alpha glycerols, and it's a key compound in making white blood cells, and it's actually a compound that's in breast milk, and so it's not surprising that my body would be craving these alpha glycerols if that is then produced in breast milk, 
Um, and so needing them in my body to then have be in breast milk, which I thought was very interesting. Just, just these connections of really the food that we put into our body, if we're only getting a steady diet of ground beef and steaks, we're missing out on so many of these rich other foods that could really be contributing to our health and contributing to our overall diet. So after you slow cook your beef soup bones or your beef shanks or your oxtail, um, you're just going to take it off and you're going to strain the broth off. Keep that broth, use that broth, enjoy that broth. That stuff is so, so nutrient dense, so, so good for you, so, so healing. Um, and so you can use that in soups or stews. That's what we're doing with ours today. You can use it to cook rice. You can use it to cook you know, quinoa or another grain. Um, you could just drink it straight or use it to make like an egg drop soup or something simple like that. But it's so, so good. So this is going to be like your deep brown, rich in nutrients bone broth. Um, and then what do you do with your meat? So some people will tell you that this meat is flavorless after cooking it for so long and it's just like scrap, not good to be used. But we totally disagree with that. Um, I think the meat is still delicious. It's going to just fall off the bone basically after it is cooked. It's going to be really easy to just cut into chunks and then I just incorporate that back into um, the soup that we're making or we could use it for like a stir fry or a curry or something like that. Um, it's perfect for those applications where it's kind of mixed in with a bunch of other things. I wouldn't probably take it as like the main, you know, beef and potatoes and eat it that way, but cooked in with vegetables and a stir fry or a soup, this um, beef soup bone meat or meat from an oxtail um, is perfect for that. And so I just take the broth, make soup, and throw that beef right back in there. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that two-step process of um, slow cooking the, the beef, straining the broth and doing that, you could also just do it as a one pot meal. So you could just throw in your beet, uh, your soup bones or your oxtail with the bones and everything, throw in your water, um, get that cooking and then just add in you know, your potatoes and carrots and vegetables and whatever else you wanted to add to your stew right then and there and just have a one pot meal. So after that is done slow cooking, you're just gonna need to go in and remove the bones, um, but the bones are pretty big and easy. You know, they're just gonna fall off basically. So you just have to remove the bones and then you have a one pot super stew ready to go. And actually in the post below, I'll post one of our favorite recipes for doing that kind of one pot beef stew using beef soup bones. So not only are these organ meats or these kind of more obscure cuts of beef gonna be way less expensive than um, your more popular cuts like your ground beef or your steaks or your roasts. Um, they also just add a whole new level of nutrition and flavors to your meals. So I highly encourage you, pick one, try it, um, try something new, add it to your diet, and let me know what you think. So thanks so much for watching today and we'll see you next time.